Hey everyone, today I'm excited to take you through a captivating journey into an Australian sci-fi film, Alien Arrival, also known as Arrowhead. Directed by Jesse O'Brien and featuring Dan Moore, this film, released in June 2016, plunges us into a war-torn future. Our protagonist, Kai, a prisoner of war, is promised freedom in exchange for a daring rescue mission, saving his father. However, his quest spirals into terror when he crash lands on a desolate moon swathed in a toxic atmosphere. Alone, Kai faces a relentless battle for survival, not just against the brutal elements, but against a bizarre and deadly alien entity. Critics are divided. Some are mesmerized by the stark beauty of the alien landscapes contrasted sharply with Kai's ordeal, creating a gripping atmosphere. Others feel the plot tread simplistic ground, calling it somewhat predictable. But what do you think? Every film strikes each viewer differently, and I'm eager to hear your thoughts after this recap. So without further ado, let's dive into Alien Arrival. How does it stack up? Can Kai beat the odds and find his way back home? Let's unravel the story and discover the answers together. In the bleak depths of a mining colony prison, dozens of prisoners toil under the oppressive conditions enforced by mouth-clamping devices. The routine is disrupted when the crusher pit malfunctions, and Kai, a skilled prisoner, swiftly restores its operation. The tension intensifies with the arrival of Hatch, a notorious general defeated by General Lang. His presence sparks a violent confrontation. A guard's aggressive punch is answered by a fierce headbutt from a fellow prisoner, igniting a brawl. In the ensuing chaos, a guard malevolently reverses the crusher pit, gruesomely dragging a prisoner to his death. Hatch covertly signals, resulting in the assassination of a guard. Led by Hatch, the prisoners revolt. Amidst the turmoil, another guard exploits the crusher pit to eliminate more prisoners. During a brief distraction, Kai tries to stop the massacre, but is tragically caught by the machine's relentless chain. Struggling, Kai manages to grab a nearby weapon and fires at the chain, but to no avail. Facing no alternative, he sacrifices his leg to escape the deadly trap. He crawls back, finally shutting down the machine. As another guard attempts to intervene, Hatch's signal cues a hidden sniper, who decisively takes down the guard. Overwhelmed and injured, Kai passes out. When he regains consciousness, Kai finds himself on Hatch's ship, his lost limb replaced with a mechanical prosthetic. Hatch, removing Kai's mouth clamp, unveils his strategy to amass a rebel force against General Lang. He reveals that Kai's father, a fellow rebel, is captured and facing execution on the approaching Liberation Day. Understanding Kai's prowess as a pilot, Hatch entrusts him with a critical mission to infiltrate an enemy ship and extract vital data. The stakes are high, succeed and save his father while gaining valuable intelligence for their cause. Committed to the cause and his father's rescue, Kai agrees to undertake the perilous mission. Kai is placed in suspended animation and stealthily transported aboard the enemy vessel, Arrowhead. He awakens prematurely and quietly navigates to access the ship's crucial records. Over the radio, Hatch guides him through connecting a device that automates data extraction. Despite system vulnerability warnings and persistent red alerts signaling impending failures and electromagnetic disruptions, Kai pushes through until the download is complete. Hatch confirms the disturbances stem from an electromagnetic storm and urges a swift file transfer. However, as Kai initiates the transfer, the storm rattles the already compromised ship interrupting the transmission and cutting off communication with Hatch. The ensuing chaos causes the ejection of all escape pods with the slumbering crew. In a frantic response, Kai rushes to the ship's shuttle, which is ejected and crashes on a nearby planet. Upon regaining consciousness amidst the wreckage, Kai's attempts to reconnect with Hatch are futile. Stepping out, he gasps for air in the toxic environment and quickly retreats back inside. The shuttle's AI, RE3FF, cautions that prolonged exposure to the atmosphere could prove fatal. Looking out, Kai sees the arrowhead sinking slowly. He seeks an update from RE3F, who requests proper credentials to proceed, but alerts him of the critically low oxygen supply at just 12%. Suddenly, a transmission from a crew member named Oleander calls for any survivors to convene at the crash site. Donning an oxygen mask, Kai ventures out, 
finding Oleander's corpse in a stirring pod nearby. He opens it to rescue Terran, sharing his oxygen as they make their way back to the shuttle, unnoticed by whatever force drags Oleander's body away. Once inside, Terran logs into the system and regards Kai warily. Although RE3F can't pinpoint the arrowhead, Terran stresses the urgency of locating the escape pods. With no way to contact Hatch, Kai hesitantly agrees to follow her. Terran then reveals they're actually on a moon, evidenced by the giant planet overhead. Their search leads them to a deteriorated research probe, its metal extensively corroded by the atmosphere. Shortly thereafter, Kai and Terran encounter the arrowhead's wreckage beside a luminous obelisk, which Kai is certain wasn't there before. Amid their strategic deliberations, Terran confronts Kai with accusations against General Hatch, claiming he perpetrated mass atrocities before the war. Kai, dismissing these claims as mere propaganda, opts to head back to the shuttle. At the shuttle, Kai tries to seize control, requesting RA-3F to engage the flight system, but the AI denies access due to his lack of authorization. Seeking any news on Hatch, Kai prompts RE3F to play a confessional video in which Hatch seemingly admits to his crimes during the war. Kai, however, remains skeptical, noticing Hatch's ambiguous gestures that hint at possible coercion. Pressing for more clarity only reveals that the details are classified. Amidst this, Oleander broadcasts a distressing update announcing that evacuation procedures would initiate in 30 minutes. Resolute, Kai returns to Terran, determined to depart with her despite the impending dangers. Recognizing the risk posed by his recognizable uniform, Kai starts shedding its distinctive parts, unaware of the lurking dangers. Their urgent journey to the Arrowhead is abruptly interrupted by a violent earthquake, escalating their plight. In a startling turn, Terran watches in horror as an unseen force drags Kai into a cave. Despite her desperate attempts to save him, Kai is snatched away. Alone and frantic, Terran hurries to the arrowhead only to discover that the pods have already left. In despair, she makes her way back to the shuttle. Four days on, Terran's exploration leads her to discover Kai's abandoned gauntlet and axe near the still glowing obelisk. To her shock, she finds Kai alive but unconscious his body strangely enveloped in a mysterious goo, and his previously missing leg miraculously restored. She hauls him back to the shuttle where her tests reveal a symbiotic relationship between Kai and an alien organism, providing him with immunity to the toxic atmosphere. When Kai regains consciousness, he can only recall a deep, enveloping sleep and feels unusually heavy. Terran confesses her inability to pilot the shuttle due to her scientific background. Resolved, they revisit the obelisk. Kai's strike reveals it to be a soft cocoon housing the goo-covered oleander. They transport him back to the shuttle, where a simple touch causes his body to twitch. They ingeniously scan his eyes with makeshift tools, successfully unlocking the shuttle's flight controls. As Kai prepares the shuttle for departure, he inquires about Liberation Day with RE3F and learns he has 76 days to save his father. Outside the shuttle, Oleander violently awakens, convulsing and deliriously warning of Hatch's deadly plans. As he wildly grabs a gun and fires, Kai attempts to disarm him, but amidst the struggle, Terran is tragically caught in the crossfire and killed. Overcome with rage and grief, Kai manages to subdue Oleander, but then collapses from sheer exhaustion. When Kai comes to, he is once again beside the obelisk, mysteriously healed. Drawn by enigmatic lights in the sky, he returns to the shuttle, only to be horrified by the skeletal remains of Terran and Oleander. Inside, Re3F informs him that the shuttle's engine malfunctioned after 34 days of neglect. Now, with only 42 days until Liberation Day, Kai is haunted by footprints leading back into the caves. Noticing his hand emitting a glow similar to the obelisk, Kai, unsettled, heads back to the shuttle. Over the ensuing days, he scavenges the moon for parts to repair the shuttle's engine and retrieves Terran's ID badge. As RE3F plays cartoons to lighten the mood, a disturbing noise one night sends Kai into agonizing pain, causing him to collapse and further damage the shuttle. RE3F urges him to rest to avoid more severe accidents, but compelled by the disturbing sounds, 
Kai ventures into the cave, where a monstrous creature confronts him. The encounter is too much, and Kai faints from the pain and the shock of alien limbs sprouting from his back. Waking up covered in goo, Kai realizes that his fear and pain induce his transformations. Desperate to rid himself of the alien entity, he vents his frustration on the shuttle's engine. In a moment of despair, he learns from Ori 3 f that Liberation Day passed while he slept, leading him to believe he's fated to stay on the moon indefinitely. Three years later, Kai has adapted to his lunar existence, learning to preemptively control his transformations by inducing pain. Intrigued by the persistent, mysterious lights, one night he frees a firefly from a glowing helmet, observing it merge into a stunning aerial light show. Back at the shuttle, Kai notes missing footprints in the absence of Terran's badge. RE3F theorizes that Oleander may have undergone a transformation similar to Kai's, suggesting a cyclical nature of death and rebirth for them. Rejecting RE3F's suggestion to end his life for research, Kai resolves to face the Oleander creature head on. After successfully drawing out and neutralizing the creature, Kai secures a tissue sample for RE3F to analyze, confirming it as Oleander's DNA. The recurring roars following their deaths seem to trigger a reaction in the environment, perhaps catalyzing their regeneration. Confounded by these revelations and reminded of Terran by a mention of her profession, RE3F uncovers a recording showing that Terran had survived the night she was presumed dead. Angered by RE3F's withholding of information, Kai becomes determined to find Terran. He outfits RE3F with a mobile unit made from shuttle parts, and together they delve deeper into the caves, following a strange signal amidst disruptive electromagnetic interference, guided by an unusual scent into the depths of the unknown. In the shadowy depths of the cave, Kai requests illumination from RE3F, which accidentally triggers a loud video. As Kai scrambles to lower the volume, the noise summons a monstrous creature from the darkness. The beast lunges, Kai evades, and RE3F is struck instead. The creature then bites Kai's arm, but he seizes the opportunity to strike back with his axe, slaying it as a familiar roar fills the cave. Kai stumbles upon his original body and Oleander's, both a stark reminder of the grim reality they face. In a moment of mercy, he suffocates Oleander, putting an end to his tortured existence. Kai contemplates a similar fate for his own original body, but finds himself unable to proceed. Retrieving his prosthetic leg, he and RE3F resume their quest to find Terran. They pinpoint the last known location of Terran's heartbeat, discovering evidence of her escape. Amidst technical malfunctions, Kai uncovers a pulse grenade in his prosthetic, realizing Hatch's betrayal. The data transmission was a ruse. As they ponder this revelation, escape pods inexplicably rain down from the sky, despite having departed three years prior. RE3 discloses that the moon serves as a time dilation experiment, designed to accelerate time for rapid military development. This time we see a ship descend, and Hatch emerges, admitting he received Kai's transmissions almost instantly due to the time anomaly. He confesses to downing the arrowhead and the pods to conscript the moon for his military needs. Kai misleads Hatch to the shuttle for the supposed intel. When Hatch triggers the grenade in Kai's leg, he knows that Kai has already placed the grenade in the probe, causing a devastating explosion. Transforming into his monstrous form amidst the chaos, Kai is confronted by a guard just as Terran intervenes. As the creature, Kai inadvertently destroys RE3F, while Terran convinces him that he can master his transformations. Soothed by her words, Kai returns to human form. The confrontation is abruptly interrupted by a severely wounded Hatch, who attacks, firing and stabbing at Kai. Harnessing his monstrous strength, Kai overpowers Hatch, releasing a creature limb that fatally strikes him. In the final conclusion, after reviving RE3F, Kai and Terran flee the moon in Hatch's ship, leaving behind a resonant roar that underscores the perpetual cycle of life and death on the enigmatic moon. What are your thoughts on the film's story? Please share your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more captivating stories like this. See you in the next video.